gaslighting is a type of psychological manipulation in which an abuser attempts to gain power and control over another by sowing seeds of self-doubt and confusion, deliberately and systematically feeding false information, intentionally distorting reality, and coercing the victim into constantly questioning themselves. The term originally derived from the 1944 film Gaslight, in which a woman's abusive husband slowly twists and shapes her reality until she believes she must be going insane. In many ways, this parallels the metaphysical plight of the human condition, the constant confusion, contradictions, and confounding nature of this realm. In most religions, including and especially the Abrahamic faiths, God is purported to be omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, wholly loving, benevolent, and perfect in every way. Yet at the same time, this God is the creator of all things, including Satan and every evil that exists. Every single negative, torturous, agonizing, infuriating, terrifying, tragic, disgusting, depraved, and downright evil thing in existence was created, condoned, and codified by this supposedly perfect creator. Every predator, parasite, and psychopath, every disease, death, and natural disaster, every sickness, suffering, and sordid thing under the sun is sanctioned by this holy, loving, and benevolent God. How can such a clear contradiction not raise constant suspicion in believers? Arthur Schopenhauer said, There are two things which make it impossible to believe that this world is the successful work of an all-wise, all-good, and at the same time, all-powerful being. Firstly, the misery which abounds in it everywhere, and secondly, the obvious imperfection of its highest product, man, who is a burlesque of what he should be. These things cannot be reconciled with any such belief. If you ask them, they tend to respond that Satan and man are to blame for all the evils of this world, and that the good God only allows evil in the name of freedom. In other words, when you start questioning the abundant abuses and unnecessary evils of this world, God suddenly becomes the great allower rather than the supreme creator. In short, they have been gaslighted into accepting that God simply allows evil, rather than the truth that he created, maintains, and sustains evil. In the face of every evil, every atrocity and tragedy, rather than being omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, this God suddenly becomes impotent, aloof, and invisible. But God is by definition omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, and must be, otherwise would have to be redefined as a demigod. Therefore, this Abrahamic creator is either a gaslighter or a demigod, and cannot be the true traditional monotheistic capital G God. First, the Abrahamic God gaslights believers into thinking Satan is some uncontrollable separate entity responsible for all negativity and evil in the world. In reality, however, since God is by definition omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, and omnipresent, all-pervasive, God must know everything, have power over everything, and exist even within Satan himself. In this sense, the Abrahamic God uses Satan as a scapegoat, and effectively removes himself of blame from every evil and imperfection. He is still wholly good, benevolent, and perfect, you see. It is just that pesky Satan always causing problems. Next, God, through his scapegoat Satan, manifests through a scapegoat serpent in the Garden of Eden, who manipulates Eve into breaking a previous promise she had made with God. Due to this so-called original sin, every human born forever thereafter until this very day, is said to be sinful and deserving of punishment for thousands of years because of scapegoat Eve's broken promise. Believers of this story start to develop an acute spiritual Stockholm Syndrome, causing them to blame themselves and believe that they and all of humanity are lowly sinners, unworthy and fallen, in need of a Savior's redemption. None of this should seem surprising, heretical, or blasphemous since the Abrahamic God is often portrayed in the Bible as being vengeful, vindictive, arrogant, impudent, 
insecure and indecisive. He is shown to be homicidal, filicidal, infanticidal, and genocidal, orders human and animal sacrifices from followers, and drowns nearly everyone alive, hundreds of thousands, for behaving against his bidding. This is the same god that created the predatory food chain where every living being has to kill and consume the bodies of other living beings in order to survive. He demands adoration, worship, and obedience, while at the same time supposedly allowing for complete freedom. Rather than seeing this insanity for what it is, many have the gall to call this system perfect and see the cycle of incessant suffering as some beautiful circle of life. As Arthur Schopenhauer said, this world could not have been the work of an all-loving being, but that of a devil, who had brought creatures into existence in order to delight in the sight of their sufferings. Even New Agers gaslight themselves with similar belief systems, claiming we actually choose everything about our incarnations on earth, from our parents, friends, and enemies, to all abuses we endure and tragedies we suffer. Similar to children of toxic parents, they tend to justify their abusive upbringings as tough love and learning opportunities, then continue to repeat the poor parenting behaviors themselves. All suffering, negativity, and evil is attributed to God wanting your pain to teach you something, and if bad things keep happening, it's just because you haven't learned your lesson yet. As Howdy Makowski wrote, the standard presentation is that this world was created by a loving God who cares about us. Does that really match your experience of the world and the experiences of those you see around you? How could a loving deity not step in and help, but let all the massive suffering on earth continue? Perhaps because the Creator, whoever it is, wants the suffering. That is why they are not stepping in. The entire God loves us and me is a big lie that all religions and the New Age are trapped under. They find ways to turn the torture of this world into a wonderful message and learning from light. Do you really think God wants an eight-year-old kid to get beat up, a girl to get raped, or a dog tortured by its owner? Careful examination would reveal that the Demiurge, or Satan, wants that. The idea that God loves us is a key foundation pillar upon which this entire matrix is built. It is such a strong foundation that many people will even get angry and violent if you suggest otherwise. Because if this belief were found to be false, every other connection to this reality would also have to be questioned. Thus, the God loves me belief is one of the hardest nuts to crack.